Hey, everybody, one more time in this study, could I invite you to join me in the Gospel of John chapter 21? We are talking, of course, about the resurrection of Jesus in our last study, John chapter 20. We heard all about that empty tomb, right? At the beginning of John chapter 21, we are with a few of Jesus' closest followers on the shore of the Sea of Galilee, a little north of where Jesus rose from the dead in Jerusalem. Let's listen in. Again, John is there. He is telling us what he saw and heard as an eyewitness. After this, verse 1, Jesus revealed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias. We know it more commonly as the Sea of Galilee. And he revealed himself, John tells us, in this way. Simon Peter, Thomas, called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the two sons of Zebedee, James and John, two others of his disciples were together. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. And they say to him, we'll go with you. And they went out and they got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. That's not the first time that had happened in the lives of Peter, Andrew, James, John, right? Just as day was breaking, Jesus stood on the shore. The man who had died and come out of the grave now is standing on the shore, and the disciples don't know that it is Jesus. Jesus says to them from the shore, there in the boat, children, do you have any fish? And they say, no. He tells them, cast the net on the right side of the boat and you'll find some did, and they caught so many fish they weren't able to haul it into the boat. That disciple whom Jesus loved, we know him as John, said to Peter, it is the Lord. That's the only explanation as to how this has happened. But when Simon Peter hears it, he puts on his outer garment. He had been stripped for work, and he threw himself into the sea. The other disciples came in the boat, but Simon Peter swims all the way to shore. They had been about a hundred yards off. And when they get on the land, they see a charcoal fire in place. Now that ought to make us think of what we heard just a couple of chapters before, right? When there was a charcoal fire on the night of Jesus' betrayal, Simon Peter is around it with others, and he gets scared. And he denies that he even knows who Jesus is three different times. Now there is another charcoal fire, and... Fish are laid out on it and bread. And Jesus tells the disciples to bring some of the fish that they had just caught. Simon Peter went aboard. He hauled the net ashore full of large fish. In fact, John, writing as an eyewitness, tells us exactly how many of them there are. 153 fish. That's a huge number. But the net didn't even tear. Jesus invites them to come have breakfast, and none of the disciples ask who he is. They know this is the Lord. Jesus takes bread. He gives it to them with some of the fish. John reminds us this is the third time that Jesus has revealed himself to the disciples after he had been raised from the dead. But there's a specific aim in this appearance of Jesus. He needs to talk to Simon. And so in verse 15, he asks him, Do you love me more than these? Simon replies, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, 
feed my lambs. Jesus said a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And Peter replies, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus says to him, tend my sheep. He says to him a third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? How many times had Simon Peter denied that he even knew Jesus? Three times. Now, three times Jesus has asked, do you love me? And Peter knows what is going on here. He's, he's grieved because Jesus has said to him the third time, do you love me? And all that he knows to say is, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. But he continues, truly, truly, I say to you, when you were young, you used to dress yourself and walk wherever you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and another will dress you and carry you where you do not want to go. John clues us in. This Jesus said to show by what kind of death Simon Peter was to glorify God. And after Jesus has said this, he looks Peter in the eye and says, follow me. Peter turned and sees John, the disciple whom Jesus loved, following them, the, the one who had also leaned back against him during the supper. And, and Simon says, Lord, what about this man? Jesus said to him, if it is my will that he remain until I come, what is that to you? You follow me. So John tells us that the saying spread abroad among the brothers that this disciple was not to die. But John reminds us, Jesus didn't say that John wasn't going to die. But if it is my will that he must remain until I come, what is that to you? The last words that we hear Jesus speak in the Gospel of John, how appropriate, follow me. And this is how John concludes the entire thing. This is the disciple who is bearing witness about these things and who has written these things, and we know that his testimony is true. Now, there are also many other things that Jesus did. Were every one of them to be written, I suppose that the world itself could not contain the books that would be written. But why did John write what he did? So that you and I, might believe. What a journey we have been on together over the course of the last six months. Thank you so much for walking with me through the Gospel of John. Let's talk about this last chapter together. Hope you have a great class and a great start to this new week. Mm -hmm.